March is National Women's History Month, and the Calaveras County Historical Society has a special display that is a must-see. The display is titled A Woman's Work Overlooked, The Art of Early Calaveras Women. The show features three amazing artists, Helen Turner, Effie Johnstone, and Edith Irvine. The artwork on display is mainly made up of work that has never been shown publicly. In fact, that's how the show earned its title, because the work on display has been overlooked for 100 years. I'm Jason Currier with the Calaveras Enterprise in Sierra Lodestar, and Emma Hampton at CCHS was kind enough to give me a tour of the special display. The display is located at the Calaveras County Historical Museum Complex on Main Street in San Andreas. As excited as I am to share this video with you guys, I highly suggest that you go check this one out yourselves. I even say at one point in the video that a lot of the work is just flat out ahead of its time. It's just a, a, a beautiful show. So here that video is now, and if you could please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I'd also like to thank Emma for taking time out of her day to give us the tour. Thanks you guys, hope you enjoy. Hi, this is Emma Hampton at the Calaveras County Historical Society. I'm the assistant director, and today we're going to be taking a look at our newest exhibit called A Women's Work Overlooked, The Art of Early Calaveras Women. It features Miss Effie Johnston, Edith Irvine, and Helen Turner. So first, we're going to look at Miss Effie Johnston, and she was born in 1868 in Paradise Gulch, which is near Willow Creek, which is just outside of San Andreas. She was born to uh, Mr. Wade Hampton Johnston, who was an early Calaveras County miner, and throughout her entire life, she wanted to be a writer, and she got to do so later in her life. Um, in 1890, she left home to become a waitress in different hotels along the California and Oregon coasts. Um, the drawings that you see on display here are from her time away um, in a journal. These are from 1898 and 1899. These are some of the only examples that we have of this style of drawing from the time period in our collection. Um, and for the last decades, um, they have been in storage, and this is the first time that we've been able to have them all on display for the public. Um, we do also have um, her notebook and a digitized copy of her whole notebook. And it started out as her um, school book, and then as she got out of school, it became just her drawing book. And she tells different little fake stories. Oh, wow. Um, and we have this on display, you guys, you can totally flip through it. <laughs> um, and we do have a letter between Miss Effie and Edith Irvine. When we started this project, we were skeptical on whether her and Edith were friends or even knew of each other since they were alive at the same time. And we found a letter <laughs> between Miss Effie and Edith. Um, and this was a year before Edith died. Effie was working on finding and documenting the graves in Fourth Crossing. And since Edith's mother grew up there, they were exchanging information. Wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So confirmed they actually did know each other. Yes, <laughs> it was an exciting find. Wow. Um, and then, so throughout her entire life, she did scrapbooking. And all of these are different um, newspaper clippings through different decades. Um, a lot of them are from the local newspapers, um, and some are from the surrounding counties. There are a few that are themed. Um, we have one, and I'm not sure where we put it on display, but there's one that focuses mostly on war. So we have newspaper clippings from um, the end of the Civil War to and through World War II. Wow. Yeah. And in some, of the news, in some of the scrapbooks that we don't have on display, we also have another little flippy. Um, and these highlight just different um, newspaper clippings that were interesting and relevant to the county, as well as um, showcasing some of her notes that she has included, because um, she would correct the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then later in her life, she became super involved in the historical society, um, and she would write down her father's um, stories um, of 
you know, living in the county in the early mining days. And so we have those published in our Lost Calaveras. Um, and then she would pass away in 1966 at the age of 98. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, okay, and then we're going to learn about um, Miss Helen Turner. I'll just turn around. Um, so Miss Helen Turner, she was born in 1909, um, and she lived in San Andreas where she attended high school. In the 1930s, she would go on to um, attend California College of Arts and Crafts in Oakland. Um, and most of what we have on display are her projects, um, her school assignments. So we have her, yeah, yeah. So we have um, some of her portraiture studies, um, as well as some of her actual assignments of going through and um, taking different styles of um, historic art and then trying to reposition it into a more um, modern sense. Um, and we found a lot of her work depicts women. Um, and especially what we found interesting was her use of the women's pose with a bucket and spoon um, to just show women's work during this time. Um, and kind of going from the traditional housewife. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Um, she also. I gotta say, um, the, the, all the work, the beautiful work that's in here, I think she's my, my favorite. I really Hers are. Especially this guy here. Yes. Yeah. The three, that was the, 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 the main focus, the reason we were like, we have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and also throughout her life, well, her early life, she was commissioned to do statues. Um, and so she was commissioned by Mr. Desiree Frico to commission this statue um, of the unknown pioneer, and this was supposed to go in Pioneer Cemetery. Um, and all of these were originally done in clay. The Historical Society had them cast in bronze in the 70s to preserve them. Um, as you can see, this one never actually made it to Pioneer Cemetery. Um, it was really feared that it was going to get stolen. So since, since that one at the time didn't have a fence <laughs> or a gate, right. um, so it's been in our collection for quite a while. <laughs> um, and then we also, on loan from the archives on display, we have the original gold panning frog. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, so all the big plas um, plaster frogs that we have around the county, that's the original. <laughs> Yeah. And she, that she's the designer of the original? Then? Yep, she is uh, the designer of the original. No kidding. I didn't yeah. have no idea. <laughs> um, and then so we also have, like, her artwork took up most of the room. Um, so this is her, like, fashion studies um, that we pulled. And a lot of it is, like, very 30s. Um, it was really interesting. There's a couple with women in pants. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Huh. Wow. There is one more little side. This is another one of her um, portrait studies. Yes, I love her portrait studies. They're gorgeous. They are beautiful. Almost like ahead of the time. Kind of. Mm hmm. Well, and what's also like pretty much all of everything that we have on display in this exhibit has been in storage. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it hasn't, most of it hasn't seen the light of day in oh, wow. years. So. How, how long is this on display? Um, we originally had it till the end of April. We're thinking of putting it up for at least a year just because it took a lot of time and we all love it. <laughs> so. Um, and then this is Miss Edith Irvine. The photos that we have on display came from the Brigham Young University, um, and they're available online. We do have some copies in our personal collection, but they were not 
um, as clear as Brigham Young, and that's where most of her photography went after her brother had died. Um, that's where most of it went. Um, so Edith was born in 1884 in Sheep Ranch to Mr. Thomas and Mary Irvine. Um, and her, she had a little sibling, Bob. <laughs> um, her family moved to Moak Hill when she was younger and she attended McCallamy Hill School until she went to the Normal School in Stockton, which I found is, oh. was actually named Normal School. <laughs> oh. That's um, what they refer to it as the school. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we're at normal up here. Then. Right? <laughs> um, so throughout her life, she loved her horse, music, and photography. Um, actually in her house that is still standing, um, and you can still drive past and see it in Moak Hill, um, she had a dark room built onto the back of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is, so Main Street is like bisected by the highway. So on the smaller part of Main Street, when you go up it, like you're coming back from Jackson, um, it's the first house on the left. Yeah, it's got a gorgeous like stone wall and it's really pretty. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So she is most famous for her photography. Um, unfortunately, she didn't get terribly famous until after she died. Um, but she arrived in San Francisco in 1906, um, only a couple hours after the earthquake had happened. And she was taking photos. Um, and how she was able to do that was she was hiding her camera in a baby carriage. Yeah, because um, cameras were being confiscated by the police because the, you know, the, the mayor, or the city government didn't want it to get out of how bad the earthquake was. <laughs> yeah, so they were confiscating cameras or anything to document the severity of it. Um, her most famous one actually is this one of the dead horses. Um, and that one you can find in a quick Google search. <laughs> oh, is that right? Really? Yeah, yeah. But that's her, one of her more famous Her pieces. more famous ones, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we have the ones from San Francisco kind of scattered about, but for the most part, um, they're all photos that she's taken around the county. Um, she was commissioned by the company that built the Electra Dam um, to take photos of it. And we have one of those photos just right over there with one of the um, um, no, I forget what it's called, but one of the big, essentially, cogs <laughs> for that. Yeah, <laughs> in comparison to the guy standing there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we have um, like the stump house that was on um, the stump and big trees, um, the wet cheer mine, which was just outside of Moak Hill, um, and then my favorite one is Moak Hill in the snow. <laughs> and everything pretty much looks the same. <laughs> and it does, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then, so Edith went on to um, be a school teacher at McCallamy Hill Elementary. Um, so we do have a photo of her here, and she's this woman. She was a very, very stern looking woman. <laughs> yeah. But she was a great teacher, and she taught there for a number of years. Um, unfortunately, she had been battling um, a a disease through most of her life, um, which led her to become addicted to the painkillers. Um, and she would pass away at the age of 65 in 1949. So, yeah, so she was the, the youngest. Mm -mm. No, and so after she passed away, um, her brother got all of her photography, her cameras, and all of that. Um, and then when he passed away, it went to his nephew. And um, his nephew is still alive. Um, but he, yeah, but he um, had donated most of her negatives and um, photography and cameras and stuff to Brigham Young. Um, and we actually just got a donation out of, um, I think it's Irvine, it might have been Orange County, um, from the, one of the museums down there that had her family photo album. And so we got to go through that, and there's photos of her mom as like a 20-year-old a and her family. and. It was really great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. How cool. Yeah. 
She does beautiful, I did beautiful. Oh my gosh, I know. There's some that I really want to like be able to zoom in on because on the computer we could do it, but some of them we couldn't. Mm -hmm. So like in this one, in the way, way back, those two buildings are on fire. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then this one down here, um, there's a small sign. It's really, really blurry. But on um, online, when you zoom in, it says cheap real estate for sale. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can get it real cheap. Yeah. So just the fun little finds. Um this one this one was my favorite. Um I mean they're all they're all my favorites, but Edith's I put a lot of work into. <laughs> oh yeah, this was your This baby. was mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. But yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, and this is only like a sixteenth of, of her work. Yeah. It's funny how somebody that talented can go undiscovered until she passed. Mm -hmm. She didn't really broadcast much that she was a photographer, really. It would just be people that kind of knew that she did photography. Right. But. And I guess back then, but doesn't travel as, as well. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Folks need to come down here and check it out in person for sure. It's definitely worth coming down and checking out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love old stuff like this though. It's yeah. especially art. Yeah. There's something about old artwork that just and it's and you don't get to see it all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not something that, that is really around. Mm -mm. It's mostly modern stuff. Yeah. They're looking to sell it, not to display it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful work. Thank you for, for walking us through. Yeah, of course. Yeah.